So we have with us today a very special guest. Um, I met Josh two or three years ago at AMSPA during a clinical workshop, and it was like the biggest fangirl moment of our lives together. Like, oh, I'm, I wanted to meet you. You want to meet me? A big hug and brace. And since then, we've just we've become fast friends. And uh, the fun thing about Josh is he's just as crazy in regular life as he is on Instagram. It is the same <laughs> person throughout. You will get nothing different. Trust me. Yeah. So I think it's always fun to have people who are very real on our webinars to talk about best practices, what they're doing in their clinics, uh, just all the things that we want to say that we typically don't in a very PC world. So we are super jazzed to have you today and I'm going to be manning your PowerPoint deck for you, but I'm going to let you do most of the talking. If you guys have questions, there's a Q and a bar. You can type in your questions. There's also a chat feed. Let us know. And I'll pause and ask those as we take time in between going through some slides. So the slide deck is kind of loose. Don't worry about that. It's going to be a lot of talking and Q and a, so we shall get started. All righty. So I put a few fun things on here about you, Josh, if you want to give us some overview in case no one knows you on the webinar, yeah. tell us all about yourself. So my name is Josh Davis. I, or, but, but honestly, I don't even really go by that anymore. People don't know my name. They're like Josh Davis who, and then they say Botox Josh and it's like, Oh, there you go. Uh, but I am a registered nurse here in uh, Tennessee, just South of Nashville in Franklin and uh, was in background was in, trauma critical care at uh, Vanderbilt, was a critical care nurse for a few years, and was like, whoo, honey, that ain't for me. And uh, I got into aesthetics about eight years ago uh, through oral surgery, and aesthetics, oh, I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. Um, went to Vandy and uh, for Vanderbilt for music for my first degree, and then Belmont for nursing. So musical nurse, we'll see where it's getting me. I think the music side and the art side of aesthetics is really a cool, cool little thing. But uh, down here in the good old South, you can probably hear it in my accent. It's a little country. I tried to leave it behind when I left, but you can take the boy out of the country, honey, but you can't take the country out of the boy. So I was like, I went to Vanderbilt, got a little gayer, but it's fine. But it's still in there. But yes, yeah, so I um, am CEO of uh, Whisperwood, an aesthetics clinic under the medical direction of Dr. Brady Harris. He is a fantastic uh, cosmetic surgeon. He owns his practice here in Nashville as well. It's called Image Surgical Arts can't do what I do without him. He is fantastic. And it, I'm very blessed to have a doctor that's so supportive of um, everything that we do and, and loves nurses and, and MPs and all that stuff. And it's just a really good setup. But it's here in Brentwood, Tennessee. And uh, there's our little team there. You've got, you may know Botox Presley. Her name is technically not Presley, it's Victoria. You got me, Mary Lee, or Pretty Me Looks. She's really phenomenal. She's one of my best friends. Uh, got notified for her um, through Broadway for her makeup. That's phenomenal. And there's Dr. Harris and then the male esthetician. That was actually my uh, partner of seven years. We've separated since, but he's a phenomenal person. So that's our little team that we've got. We've grown since then. We've got two more people. Um, so yeah, and then I watched a podcast here lately. Uh, and it, last week, actually, and it was within the first 24 hours, it got ranked on iTunes. And I, I was like, what is happening? I'm just little old me. And currently it's sitting seventh in the category. So I'm very blessed with that thing. Um, I'm known for tea time on Instagram. If you don't know me, I'm at Botox Josh on Instagram. I'm kind of like the person who has no filter and keeps it raw and real and says what's ever is on his mind. And that just kind of blew me up, I guess, on Instagram. I'm really good at aesthetics, but so I guess if I was really bad at aesthetics, I probably couldn't get away with, <laughs> with half the stuff that I do. And uh, so, yeah, that's a little about me. And then I guess you'll hear a little bit about our big webinar that's coming up this Sunday, the Aesthetic Squad, kind of like the misfit, misfits in the industry. We've got a massive in-depth training of all the stuff that you really want to know, uh, off-label, weird areas, but not just like where to do, but like the how much you use, what you do. It's going to be great. Botox bunny, Botox fairy, honey, Larry. It's, ugh, it, it goes on and on. So that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Or as they call him, Daddy Larry. I love that. Oh, way. God. We, like, that's Daddy. He, every time he, oh, in one of our webinars, girl, he had a backwards cat on, a cap on. He was letting that scruff grow out and he put his arms up. And I said, Larry, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm going to need you to stop sitting like that because I can't handle it. We are in quarantine and I was like, you, uh, you're you looking like a snack, buddy, and I will come through this computer screen at you. Stop it. <laughs> looking like a snack. Well, if you guys don't know, get your tea. I just told Josh, this is Harry and Megan from the Royal Wedding. This is the actual official mug. So hopefully oh, yeah. I'm drinking out of an English mug for English tea. Yeah. So what we're going to go ahead. I'm drinking some mint tea. 
Help my mind to expand. There you go. Keep you calm. Calms the stomach. Mm. Keep me calm. So we have lots to get to. I'm going to go ahead and get us started on clinical photography, which is something I'm obsessed with. You guys do great pictures. I know you and Julie Horn are very close and she's like a picture guru and consultant clinic as well. So you yeah. have all the tips and tricks you're going to share with us today. Very blessed. Two of my best friends is Fiona. Uh, as you can see in one of the pictures here, she's the owner of the consultant clinic probably one of the biggest boss bays in this world. She's like went from nothing to something and is like, I guess owns one of the best clinics in the entire industry in the entire world. And they're known for their photography and uh, spent a little bit in November over there with her. And then Julie Horn, my little unicorn bestie over there. I'm very fortunate and blessed and Instagram brought us together and, and we chat on the daily in our little, in our little WhatsApp. And, um, and I'm very blessed. I love them dearly. And, but you know them for, their before and after photos and um and their phenomenal work and you know they get sometimes that like oh it's fake or whatever i'm sorry to tell you but i've had my lips done by julie horn and i've also seen firsthand what happens at the consultant clinic and it is not photoshop they are that good at filler but they also have nailed clinical photography and it's so important especially your brand and appearance on social media your website everything that you do has to be top notch um, I know that like it's something that I had to up my game with with the help of aesthetic record and their help and I've noticed that like when my before and after photos got better like it would bring in like for me which was a pretty good like anywhere from 15,000 to 20,000 dollars worth of free work on one photo so if you do them right and you do them well it's really one of the best tools that you can have for your business. Totally agree. I put a couple things on here for us. Brand building. You mentioned Julie. I think she became like super famous because her pictures are so amazing. Yeah. So con consistent. Like if you look at her, her posts, they're always consistent, perfect, beautifully shot always. And she has a formula for that. Yep. She taught us at the aesthetic next last year. She'll be there again this year. Yep. And then I put, you're an AR user. I have to do a shameless plug. I love um, we, <laughs> we use them for charting. I think it's nice to see a, the patient's real face, not mm -hmm. a template when you chart. Yeah. And then of course, consultant clinic, they do a great job in education too. I like the way they use this one here to talk about the face and they use really good pictures to explain what's happening all over the face. So true. Like brand building is huge. Like when you establish that you are nothing without your brand in this industry. And so like your brand should be like, you know, like your logo from your appearance on your website, your appearance on social media. And and, and, but then also your work is your brand. And so when you, like Julie has nailed that and like, you got to nail the photographer. You don't have to be a professional photographer, but you have to nail the photography and get better at it to just really elevate that brand. And the better those pictures look, especially on social media with Instagram, you, it is like picture heavy. And that is, it's, it, if it's a pretty picture, honey, Instagram will push that up in that algorithm. You'll get more likes and engagement that way. And then charting is huge because if you didn't document it, it didn't happen. And so that in itself can just really help. Like, you know, I know it's helped us like a, a, a platform like Aesthetic Record. You know, you know, there's plenty of times where we'll take before and after photos and uh, the patient will come back at a two week follow up. They get to not only see their result and they get to see because sometimes they get back and they're just, I don't see a big difference. And then you show them before and after photo and they're like, oh my God, because they, they <laughs> see yourself all day, every day. They, you know, we're our own worst critic and we're in the mirror going like, what is this wrinkle over here? What is, I can't do it. Like, what is this? You know, especially now in COVID, but um, they come back at that two week mark. And if you wouldn't have had that after photo, they're going to be an unhappy person. So you can really show them the journey. Um, and, you know, over the years, not just short term, but long term, it's a beautiful thing. And to have it all digitally, if a protected like aesthetic record, it's phenomenal. I'm not shamelessly plugging them. They're not paying me to do that. I just really like aesthetic record. Let me just get that out of the way. We use it in our practice and I love it. So charting and then just, you know, documenting, uh, you know, everything. It's just nice to have good clinical photography. And then patient education, when you have these wonderful before and after photos, then when you go educate during your consultations, or on social media, like when you can, it's one thing for me to be like, oh, we're going to do cheek filler through here. That's going to help your cheeks and let's do a little jawline and your lips. And they're like, okay, but like, but then if you have a clinical lookbook of good photography to show your actual work and you've documented that and patients are obviously okay with you sharing those, then it just helps, it helps in, uh, create trust and the patient, they don't fear it as much. There's a little bit more relaxation and they're like, oh wow, that's really fantastic. And they kind of get an idea of what they're gonna look like. So photography, honey, is great on a business level, 
a charting level patient education, a legal level, honey, it protects you. It can make or break you for sure. And I have amnesia. I'll get my lips done and be like, they didn't even look any bigger. Like I didn't even get them done. And oh, then yeah. I look at the before and after and I'm like, oh yeah, they're like Kylie Jenner right now. So yeah. I'm guilty of the amnesia. The biggest, you oh, go ahead. Uh, the biggest story that I had was there was this one and she had come to me and we did our, the, the consultation. So a lot of people think the aesthetics industry is very vain. Uh, like it's just like, oh, I want to be pretty and I want bigger lips and, and all this stuff. But they don't realize the other side of stuff that we see, like when the people, survivors of domestic violence um, or, you know, uh, like self-harm, um, you know, come in and we help reverse, you know, things, you know, on their face, scarring or something that reminds them of who they used to be or what they went through. When we converse that and we can help heal them in a certain way, they don't see that side. And I had a patient come to me one time and she had had like a doctor had told her, um, well, throw in filler and you would be like throwing filler in the ocean. And I'm like, okay, number one, rude bedside manners. Come on. But it was for lower face wrinkles and it was, it was a wrinkle, but I was like, that's not a typical, it was like a J hook wrinkle. And I was like, uh, so I started asking questions and we got to the thing that like, she, she did, uh, you know, disclosed that she was struggle. She had struggled years ago with bulimia, and I was like, so I started asking questions. Like, did you use your hand to make yourself, you know, induce vomiting? And she was, you know, tears were starting to come up, and I was just like, and did you get to the point where you needed to use utensils? You know, because after a certain point, they can't. They have to use utensils. And she's like, yes. And I said, sweetie, that's not a wrinkle. That's actually a scar from years and years of you using your hand to 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 make yourself throw induce induce vomiting. And she's just crying and so, and she's like, nobody's gotten to the point of that. And we documented with uh, photography and we got done after her treatment with some um, uh, PRP and microneedling and some filler. And she came in, she's like, Josh, I, I just feel so good when I leave your office. But then like I get home and I'm like, oh, oh. so I was just like, I was like, oh God. So I go back to the before photo and we, it was at the last appointment. We take that after photo and I show her the picture. It took me 15 minutes for her to stop crying because she was like, oh my gosh, she sees herself all day, every day. We don't. And these, this photograph really changed her life. And she, and, and she was just sobbing. She was like, thank you. Oh, wow. She didn't notice the dramatic difference. And she came back in a month later for like a final follow-up or skincare pickup. And she was like, Josh, I have to thank you. She goes, I no longer look in the mirror and be reminded of who I used to be thanks to you and your team and what you all did. And so there's a whole side of that. But at the same time, if I didn't have that photography there and been like, you know, I couldn't have shown her her progress and maybe she might not have been able to truly heal from seeing herself in a different light from how she used to be. That's a, fa a, a very powerful um, example I have her, where photography has really uh, been a rock star. Totally agree. And I'm going to, switch it from being the um the injector to now like the ceo managing people managing the money yeah this is what i do with every day people calling us saying my patient's disputing a credit card charge what do i do oh god and like you said no picture it never happened so we we have the ability in our system to like just export the chart directly to the credit card company and fight the dispute but if you don't have that photography Help. helps you in a lot of these things and in that through, like a lot of times when it gets disputed, I think sometimes HIPAA laws kind of go like you can, like in a dispute you can, yeah. that happened twice. Um, and it's sad when people do that. I'm just like, like, how do you don't make me drag you out of your car? How do you drag you back in here? You know, like, it's just crazy. But then it's great. Like, we're just like, okay, this is this person. This is their profile. And we blur out their information. And then we literally send in their before and after. Uh, and send it to them like here's proof that they have the service and this is what they have done and they never win and we're talking like a like one was like a few thousand dollars worth they try to dispute and it, the, it, the photography help saves your life saves your butt and if you ever have to go to court you mm -hmm. don't have good records of charting and pictures it's yeah. hard it's hard to defend yourself i've seen it happen too many times so <laughs> the legal action, you know, like, you know, you come in and heaven forbid you didn't take before photos and they have a reaction and they come back in a month later and their face is blown up. They look like, Hey, you guys, the Goonies, you know, something's went wrong. Like shit's hit the fan. Something's wrong. And you, and they're just like, I never looked like this before. And you're just like, or heaven forbid, like they come in and like a brows dropped or like, you know, something's going on. And you don't have what they look like before. So in the court of law, they could have, you know, so it just doesn't look very good. So it is, it's the best insurance policy and the cheapest insurance policy that you can buy for sure. 
Agree. Well, I'm going to move us on. Okay, so I got this crazy video. Mm. So we have video in our system. Yeah, um, we do. We do video before and afters, and this is me in my house. I'm going to play this while we're talking about it. It's going to crack you guys up. So we do pictures, obviously, but we also do video. Yeah. People want to take like 9 million pictures, which I don't understand. Like you'd only need so many pictures. Like just do a video. So this is like our super fun video of me. Um, hopefully you guys can see it playing. But like we let we show the patient a little example oh, of what it looks like. There's Kenny. And then you can take the patient. Here's me with my awful frown. <laughs> and you can do a before and after together just like you can with pictures on our videos so it makes it kind of nice it's nice because it, photography for example like i know the backstory like with like julie horn myself consultant clinic uh, and a bunch of the other good if you're a good injector people will throw rocks at things that shine and <clears throat> because their photography is so good and their before and after photos that people go and they will like start throwing shade. Oh, that's Photoshop or like Julie Horn's big one. She puts, oh, you're just putting lipstick and makeup on. Well, with Julie, you know, she like when we're in the face, like all this stuff, like and the skin can get blotchy. That's not a cute little before and after photo. What if somebody's afraid of looking like that and you've shown them before and after photo with nasty, you know, like red blotchy skin, irritated skin and stuff. So like she she like kind of puts mm -hmm. in back to normal and then all she uses is aquaphor on her lips and people accuse her of lipstick and i'm just like you've just had a needle in your lip over and over and over again what are you going to do you're going to bleed which means and you're going to have increased blood flow which means your lips are going to look pinker redder i'm just like and you would be amazed at the injectors that are calling her like that fake or whatever i'm like sweetie what nurses did you get your education from walgreens.edu like <laughs> increased blood flow. You know that's not lipstick. Like, but they started doing videos. Videos are a lot harder to edit on that end, but like it's like living proof. I started doing videos because people would be like, mm-hmm. And so I'm like, all right, here you go. Un unfiltered and real. So this feature in aesthetic record is fantastic. And it's also great to like, it's one thing to like furrow, but like sometimes you don't get it at the at the peak. Yeah. And having a video of them animating it and showing what they look like, it takes it to a whole other level. I want to plug my friends at Color Science. Even Up is so good for that after injection photo. So if you don't have Even Up in your practice, get it. And Oxygenetics is also really good. But yeah, I think they're fun for social. People love video. We do six different expressions. So, you know, you can capture a lot. But <laughs> instead of taking a thousand pictures, just do a couple videos. It's wonderful. So. And it's like, <clears throat> it's, it's something that it makes <clears throat> when it comes to Instagram. Instagram is all about the videos right now. So if you're not getting as much likes or engagement on your before and after photos, <clears throat> one thing that we're going to do when we come back in is we're going to switch over to doing video before and after photos. And uh, I've seen it on other pay like Botox bunnies and um, oh, a few of the others like Lori Robertson. There's a bunch of them that switched over to video videography and their views go up and their engagement goes up because it's an actual video versus a still picture. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's why we did it because it's the wave of the future. If you're not doing dynamic posing, everyone looks good at it still. You yeah. Know, you got to make them, you got to make them behind make the, the crow's feet. Behind the times, I need to cancel everybody's subscription to old school photography and subscribe <laughs> to video. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we can help you with that. Hey, right. so, yeah, there's all the, there's all the little poses, but so we're going to talk about your photo booth setup. I put in a couple things. Um, these are just some pictures from the way that we do things at AR as we tell people how to do photo photo booths. They only have an iPad and like a selfie light. You yeah. have like intense, awesome gear. So mm -hmm. yours is a little more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. um, nice. tough, but tough. I will tell you about ours too when we get there. But we're going to look at the gear that you're using. Yeah. So tell so, us all about it. It's crazy. So I personally, we have a few, we, and we're also the iPhone is in there too. Like this little guy, the iPhone 11, their cameras are, are great. Okay. Um, so don't let this intimidate you or, or like if you're a new startup, you're like, Ooh, cause that was a pretty pricey camera. But for me personally, not only am I going to be doing great before and after photos, but I'm also going to be doing with the, the podcast, we're going to like a, my YouTube channels coming. So this, I got the Sony, um, a7 um, III, and it is a, it's great for YouTubers and video. The video with Sony right now is boom. You, we know Canon, we know Nikon, we know Sony. Sony, they've got the new mirrorless camera. It's really good. That's a few thousand dollars, but it is phenomenal. It's a phenomenal camera that can, for me, do both. Do you need to get one of those? No, you can do 11s, but if you really want to take it to a next level, 
it's a small investment. If I do a few photos with this and it gets me $20,000 worth of work because my photography got better or I got really good videos, that paid for the camera. So that was a no-brainer for me. So you've got to have really good photography. If you got an iPhone 5, sweetie, we need to have a conversation. We need to just throw that away, like probably sell it as a relic and upgrade a little bit. Let me upgrade you, honey, and get you a new iPhone or a camera. Um, and that way you've got the equipment to really take good photography before and after photo. Uh, the other thing is lighting. So a few things. Uh, some of you guys have rooms that have windows in them. And what happens that we can't control, the sun changes. So <clears throat> I would urge you guys, like if you don't have a space in your to do, like then it, it will, it'll work uh, with, with an open window. But we like natural good lighting but sometimes it's not consistent. Consistency is key. So I'm always a big proponent of trying to find a place with consistent lighting. And that is maybe no windows or an area to where it's just, you've got your fluorescent lighting or whatever lighting you have that can remain constant. And then you add a light source such as these lights. This is the glam core lights and they are phenomenal. Um, or a ring light, like right back behind me, this is just a ring light, but we've got glam core lights. If these are boom, this is what consultant clinic uses and they get, oh, it's phenomenal lighting. It's what we use. And it's got two arms, it's portable, a camera, they've got one that can go right in the camera stand. There's different levels that you can get for them, but they really have good, they're, they're not bad, like 150 to 300 bucks, depending on what you want. But that is able, you're getting in a place where you can get consistent lighting. So that way it's not one, you know, like, by the time you're, you got your window open and you take the before photo with your lips and then it sometimes it takes you an hour to do lips or whatever, or you're doing full face or whatever it is and the sun has moved and now the lighting is off, your before and after photos are gonna be off. So if you don't, a, a room without windows is perfect. Uh, we were actually, it's her office is a wreck right now because we're doing redoing some stuff before COVID, COVID stuff opens back up. But we've got a space where it's gonna be consistent lighting. There's no access to windows. <clears throat> And the glam core lights will sit there with the camera on the tripod and there's a background for us that it will be um it's a gray background right now but we're going to get one printed that's like whisper wood um so we're redoing hours in the process and then uh it's consistent that way no matter if you're esthetician your nurse injector whatever it is like your consistency across your brand is fantastic um so but it's a little space back here that's like kind of out of the way and that's just where we do photography and that's our photography station um, and then we've also had like for our lit before and after photos, me and Victoria, we have a way that in our, in our chairs, my room doesn't have, um, windows, hers does, but she's really good at like getting that lighting just right in a way that the lighting doesn't affect it very much. But <clears throat> we get not just a straight on view, not just side view. We get like this cool little angle view, which is good that I learned from the consultant clinic. And whatever works for you, if that's straight on, it's great to see multiple angles because if you see multiple angles, the less you have for haters to come on there and be like, oh, that's fake. Um, but whatever you do, make sure that you nail and practice. So you've got your great equipment set up, but then like, what does that look like? How do you take these photos? And it comes to just like doing a great set of lips. Practice makes perfect. Like, do you think I know how to ruin that camera completely right now, honey? That thing is like going to take a PhD from like Harvard to do it. I went to Vandy, but dang. And uh, so you practice makes perfect. So when we do our photos, I've got the angle. I've got them laid back in their chair for the lips. And I know exactly the chair position. It's exactly five clicks down for me. And then when I do it, I know that I can lay it back into that position. And I know I have their head sitting exactly the same way. The chair doesn't change. So use the chair to be consistent. And then I practice and I know I've just practiced to get that angle right. So that way, no matter who it is or matter how, how many times I do or how many pictures we take, I've got the angle down pat. Having it on a tripod with them standing up at a station, so easy. The other thing is eye position. Um, we, get, we get caught up in um, tear troughs is another one. Lord, honey child people will, and Dr. Subio does a great job of this, like your consistency in what you do, having a place where they look at on the wall. So like wherever they're looking at, like when they take the picture here, they've got a space to look at. When they look diagonal, space to look at. To the side, space to look at. So that way you're not like before and after photo here and in the next one it's here. Because it is a slight subtlety change of your eye position that will make you look like you nailed a tear trough when really you didn't. 
You didn't even do a tear trough. You can do a trickery of the eye. Um, distance of the camera, make sure that's consistent. That's where a tripod and having a station is very, very good because you can make it look like you've, you've got eye bags from back here. Did you get a little closer? Your eye bags disappear. So it takes time and practice to be able to really nail that down. Consistency is what you want. And then also having your patient or not being trickery fooled with it. Like we all see these Kybella results out there. You know, you know what I'm talking about, girl. It's this. Before. And then the after they go, look, I have no chin. Like, how did we see what you do? We ain't dumb. You just, you can't do that. And so it's practicing having good setup and good equipment and practicing with that and making it consistent is what's going to really elevate you. But if you don't have the equipment to start out with, I know we kind of went on a tangent there, but you rode the ride with me. But if you don't have the equipment, then you aren't going to, like, you, you're not going to get the level that you need to take your brand to the next level. That was a lot. Sorry. Spilled no, that. So we have a few questions coming in and I'll wait on some of these too, but about the backdrop or the background that you use, what color do you prefer? You mentioned using like a step and repeat with your logo on it. Do you uh -huh. like blue? Do you like black? You said gray. What are your, what are your top two? Yeah, there's some people that love uh, dark and some light. I really like um, like lighter for hours. We, if for whatever matches your brand. Um, we've got uh, for hours, we'll probably do a white or a gray. Um, and then some brands like a darker look. Sometimes uh, dark can be good. I think dark kind of can, can lose some things. You can also lose some things in white. So I would say like you can order cheap like little backgrounds like on Amazon and play with it before you order anything major. Um, but usually black or white is really good. Blue is good. Um, green, I don't know. I, green, I, I'm not a fan of green. Um, the step and repeat with your logo, that's going to be more like selfie pictures to like, mm -hmm. like, you know, social media moment. Like, oh, mm -hmm, hey, I'm at Whisperwood, got my lips done, tag us, boom, and it's a cute a cute thing we've got a grass wall for that um but i think step and repeat you don't want anything that's going to be behind the skin that that way you can't see your results like if your logo shows up and it's part of a jawline and you're trying to show jawline slimming and your logo is kind of somewhere behind in your after photo and it you kind of can't tell then i think having like a consistent solid background is the best to go for before and after photos um and a solid color but by all means a step and repeat for, or a funky wall for a selfie for tagging moments on social media. And I'm going to flip back to one. We had a question about where do you put this? So Josh has like a room set up, but these are actually in the treatment room. So we have um, in both, these are two different rooms in the same clinic. There's a, like a black sheet, if you will, you could either paint the wall, you could use whatever you wanted to, but there's a black sheet on the wall. The yep. chair is marked by a piece of tape in the floor. So the chair where she's sitting to take the picture is so many steps back. Mm -hmm. They don't zoom ever. So nope. to your point, Zoom distorts the picture. This iPad is in the same frame. And then I'll show you some ghosting features that we have on it's like a smart match. But so if you don't cool. have a room, you can do it. You can just make your treatment rooms consistent. I've seen people who close the door and the door they pulled down, almost yep. like your passport photo, they pulled down like a black yes. roll and it's like, it's a nice background. Yep. So you can go low budget too, honey. If you have to go low budget, you can go low budget. There you go, can. And those ring lights, like that light right there, Victoria has to keep her light. That's what she has in her room. And that keeps the, the photography consistent for sure. And I think the big thing is, is like if you have a photo station booth that the tripod, you have it marked on the floor. So if you ever have to move it, it goes right back in that same position, mm -hmm. everybody. And then the chair, you have marks on the floor, like you were saying, like that's there. And then you have your eye marks on the wall where they look. So everything is consistent and it doesn't change for sure. And we're getting a lot of questions about what to use. So Josh uses a camera, like a really nice camera. If you're using, like, let's say you're using a set of record, like, you know, for your clinical photography, yeah. we recommend an iPad to use our, for our system and always use it in that direction, not landscape, use it horizontal. And this 999 selfie light, when I do webinars, I have a real camera, but I also use this for webinars. It'll change your whole dynamic and I use it on every photo ever. So get, get, get a little selfie light to help. But I would say an iPhone 11 does a beautiful picture. I have the 10, not yeah. as good but the iPad does a much better job. So we have a couple of, it's good. Uh, oh, go ahead. It's good. We do like, we've got aesthetic record here on the iPad, which we do, which the ghosting image feature on there is really cool. Cause like really cool. if you're doing their after photos, it'll show you, um, yes, this, oh, it's phenomenal. 
yeah, you can like match it up. So they're always the exact same. So if you're not so good at matching the eyes and the different places, yes. you can take the before and you can mirror the after over it so that they're always exactly the same. Yeah. So these are these two are sisters, if you can't tell, but we also have this little grid picture thing here. So if you look at Victoria's eyes, I've got the grid on her eyes and her chin. So I can always frame the same place if you don't want to use the ghosting or the smart match feature, but you can do it with an iPad too. So with our system, I think it's, it's like 1100 by something pixels, some crazy high resolution. So they're big, big pictures that you can export out. They match up like a before and after, but mm -hmm. I just use the selfie light and my iPad and we get, wow. we get really great results. But for your purposes of like social media, publishing books on your coffee table, putting them on a podcast, I would say go get the real camera, learn how to use it, get a Canon, get a Sony, get something and get like some high quality, um, like printable photos that you put on a yeah. canvas or something in your office. Especially if you're a plastic surgeon or a cosmetic surgeon or a derm, getting that really good high quality photo for print and like you want to get published and all that stuff is really good. But I do say the aesthetic record has been really cool because like it almost is like a portable photography station. Like, you know, we talked about like having a station, which is really nice. But if you've got a small room and you ain't got room for it, um, that like, you know, getting, we talked about the distance from the patient, the patient being consistent. Well, with that shadow ghosting thing, it literally is making sure that whatever picture you took before from whatever distance it is that you're getting exactly that same distance at the exact same angle. So that's where aesthetic record shines through. I'm telling you, like you guys have nailed it. Like there's a, and what I love is aesthetic record is like affordable as all get out. Like my God, there's some out here that want to rob you at for like, at, like it's like a down payment on a freaking vehicle for a medical record system. AR comes along, they're like, uh, uh honey, look at this. And it's perfection. Like it is like, it has changed our life in so many ways that I can't even list. Like I am not stacked by thousands of, of paper um, left and right. And it, all of our photos are stored on the thing. So Lord, honey, Lord, thank you for aesthetic record. But and don't, don't store them on your iPad, put them in the cloud. Cause if your yeah, iPad yeah. ever gets hacked, you're toast. No, they're right there in aesthetic record. Like, boom, you don't even need to store, like no, no need to store them anymore. Like it's right there in the system. It's bay. I'm gonna pay you after this for, for these plugs. Just you kidding. heard it. No, I was like, <laughs> I'm really not. But yeah. Somebody asked about the grid system. So if you look at Victoria's full face um, picture, I have it at her eyes, which I took this picture off my computer this morning because I'm in COVID and there's no other human in my house. But this is a picture of her headshot. But I've lined up her eyes and her chin in the grid as she turns to a 45. I use like right where the mandible, like right where the, the angle changes. As, mm -hmm. the, as the bottom um, thing and then I, so you can find whatever the grid works for you, people who are asking about the grid, whatever your consistency piece is, just always use it. Cause you have a front a 45 and then a 90. So you have a few different options there, but um, this is great. Also the ring light that you mentioned. So I have a ring light here too, that I think I got it for a hundred bucks. It's amazing. It's blue light. I can just like, or Bluetooth, I can flip it from my phone. It's so good, but. Oh, get yeah. your ring light or get you a selfie light. I put it on mute there for a second because our office phone rang. I'm over at the office. I was going to show you that um, feature. Let me uh, on aesthetic record here, like just showing them like real life, what that looks like. I'm just going to pull up my little chart here. Lord, I am so crazy. I'm going to start a little thing. So like going through starting a little procedure, we're going to do it on face. So we're going to do face. It's on me. So I'm not breaking HIPAA. And then I select like, we're going to do sure. We're going to do this little guy here. We're going to click next. I click the clinic and the provider, it's so easy. And then I go through just to save time. I'm gonna go through and click like um, their, any paperwork, any consent forms that needs to be done. So we're gonna skip that for right now, but it's all right here. And then here it comes up with the photography stuff. So like front image, we're gonna take a picture and we're gonna use the camera. And so what's nice is that like, whenever it loads up through here, my Wi-Fi has been completely crazy it gives us a few little views where you can line up with the eyes and there's the grid. So like the grid helps you kind of like be able to um, line up. Like if I'm looking everything up and I put the, the eyes like right there, like if I was to do my face, you can line my face up and get it exactly using the grid system, which helps you distance wise as well. So that's that grid. It's like a live grid for you. And then once you have the, once you have a picture in there of the patient, you can always match against it every time after that. So the first one you have to grid, then you can always match against it. Yep. But someone's asking you, since you're now a Sony camera expert, what lens do you use? Because I, 
I happen to be quite close to a um, pseudo professional photographer and know that the lenses that you choose, the camera that you choose, the settings that you choose, or the stops, f stops that you choose. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on there, honey. We need to take a the class. The one on that it. the Best Buy person told me. No, actually, I've I've got two good, really photographer friends, and they told me the lens. I don't know. I can find out, and I can send you that info. Um, but it was one like there's 800 million different lenses that you can buy. So I would, what I would do is ask a photographer friend of yours, like I'm sure Instagram knows people or whatever, or just do your research on the one. The one that I got was, I think it was the one that actually came with the camera, which, which is totally fine. I got like the package duo. Um, there was that one. There's also a lens out there that I'm going to get um, here soon. That's, um, it's kind of a shorter lens and it's really good at blurring the background. Mm -hmm. I speak Botox and filler in music. I don't speak lenses, but you've got lenses out there that can do way different things. Mine has a really high end zoom in it. So it looks great with regular photography, but I can zoom in and it's really, pix it really high pixelated. Um, but the other lens can like where it does and it blurs out the background where you look like that professional photo. So like if you're doing lips or like want to do a face and everything blurred out, you could get that lens. But I think it's, I think that's like a, I think it was a 55 millimeter. I don't know. I cannot remember. Don't hold me to that. But uh, just ask a photographer or just literally they have, they, they hire professionals at Best Buy where I've got mine. They hire true photographers in their photography station. So it's not just some random Yahoo over here that has no clue what they're doing. Like the Best Buy here, they literally have like professional photography people that are in there helping people. So they, they were really good. And then so were my two friends. So someone's asking about, do you recommend a DSLR over a good iPad? I think the goal would be whatever your, or whatever your goal is to dictate it. So if you're using clinical charting photography for medical, like medical charts, for your practice, for your court cases, legal records, whatever, I think the iPad high resolution photography is fantastic. And mm -hmm. even for social media now, it's, it's good enough. You can do that. Mm -hmm. I think for Josh's purposes, a DSLR, the good cameras are for a lot of your like promotional photography and You'll see in a minute a few of the, the things that he has put together with his logo in the middle, things he's sharing on social media, coffee table books. I keep saying that word, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I think like that's he, where good camera is really important. Yeah. I got that big camera because of the, the, the videos with, with the podcast and doing the videography. The videotic, videography is, is hands down amazing with that. Um, but also to, it just takes it to the a next level. Like, um, and so where it's not like, you know, on my phone, the iPhone 11 guys, a lot of my stuff that you're going to see next was iPhone 11, like this, or, and uh, the iPhones, these are really good cameras. Um, the, um, the iPad, if you have an older iPad, then I would probably update, like if it's like several years old, because the camera technology has completely yes. changed. So in practice, like if you didn't want to get a camera, you don't have to. Your photography here and your digital system, like Aesthetic Record, right in there, the, it, they, the storage can hold those big pictures. And you don't have to have a big, uh, big one. It's just for me, um, instead of everything being done on my phone and then the memory going out on my phone, I've got something that stays in office. I don't have to have all these pictures on my phone. And um, just the, the, the quality and also traveling to these conferences and getting stuff for like videos for networks and all that stuff, wink, wink. Um, so I just had to take my mind to the next level. And I'm so lucky that I have a um, social media person that runs all of our social media and does our digital stuff with Whisperwood. She's in here also assisting us and she's a professional photographer, so she knows how to work it. So that's why I did that, but you don't have to. Um, you, the technology now is this, could I do a YouTube channel with this? Yeah, it shoots in 4k, but I just really, really liked that camera and wanted to, to not have everything blah on my phone or buy two phones. Ugh, nobody got time for that. Well, I think you had a great point too. You mentioned a few times that the iPhone 11 camera is so good. So if you have an iPad and you're <laughs> using our system, getting grainy pictures, it is not the system. It is your iPad. The iPad camera and the iPhone camera is like the thing Apple clings to as their big update every time. Mm -hmm. I recommend, I use an iPad Pro, which does a beautiful job of pictures. I have a newer version, you know, a year or less um, old, even, even up to two years. So if you're getting bad pictures with what you'd consider high resolution photography, check your iPad. It's your iPad camera. It probably isn't the actual system. So just yeah. a note on that. Yeah. I'm gonna move this to the next slide because we have questions about your, a lot of your stuff. Okay. Um, about your logos and things, but I think you mentioned this too, that consistency is key. And mm -hmm. I know that you get the haters. I worked for a, a manufacturer for many years and I would hear people say, oh, they're not a good injector. The lighting is better. Or she has a different shirt on her hair's pulled up today. So her brows look higher. 
they would say these crazy things. And so we, we use, uh, this is Jasmine who works for us as one of our examples. Her hair is in the same position. She's got the same lighting. She's in the same backdrop. Um, but to your point that day, the sun was a little bit hotter on one side of her face than the other. Uh, mm -hmm. But the idea here is that when you use a system, whether it's your EMR or you're using it with your camera, if you can stitch them together and that we have a stitching feature in our system and they look the exact same, you've won. You've done yep. a good job with consistency. If you stitch them together and their faces are looking crazy different ways and the eyes are different, you're not going to have, you, people will doubt your work and you can't really back it up as good because the pictures, they don't tell the story. Yep. So consistency, people, consistency. Mm -hmm. I can preach all day. Yes. So we have people wanting to know all about your logo watermark and how you do it. Yeah. And also your beautiful angles that you use. So walk us through it. Yeah. So uh, this is some of mine. Again, am I the level of maybe Julie and consultant clinic? No, but they're goals and I'm okay with that. Does that mean I'm a crappy injector? Absolutely not. Um, so that's the other thing. Comparison is the murder of joy. So don't compare yourself to other people. Just compare yourself to you and how can you better yourself and learn from the better ones. So like I've got an example here of the straight on lips uh, and uh, you know just uh, you know, and making them the same size and I've just over time like got the distance down like for that. The angle going at the lips I like to go boom and I like to kind of go tilt the camera to a 45 and I like to go to a 45 and it takes some time to get just the right but it's that one where you can see the full lips and it just, it's better, I think it's better than the straight on view. So that one is really, 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 really good. It's hard to get. Like I tried in, uh, in London when I was at a consultant clinic and they look like a squirrel had done a line of cocaine and tried to take some pictures. It was terrible. Like it was, they're like, it was rabbit. It was awful. And then like, for example, in there's the eye position. So like I have a space in, in my room that I'm like stare at, I have a stethoscope hanging and I'm like stare at the bell of the stethoscope and boom, her eyes are right there on it while I take pictures. And that was a tear trough. And then there's another lip head on. So, and I gave you different backgrounds where you can zoom. If you don't have a good background, you can zoom in. The background doesn't matter. The background, the black that you see in that one is the actual chair, the treatment chair. There's a little bit of the treatment chair and the gray wall behind us. But guess what? You see the, the black of the chair and the gray wall. So they're both consistent, which is why, is that the best before and after photo? Probably not. But because it's consistency, it looks good. And then there I used whack when we were using the door, but this is like phases of like what we were doing when we were playing around with it. So you just play around with it, have fun with it. Don't stress out about it. Just play around with what works for you. And you don't have to wait for patients. Use your team, like have somebody plop in the chair and just play around with it. And then the watermark, watermark your photos because people will steal them. They are nasty and they will try to, then they'll be like, oh no, I wasn't stealing them. I'm like, sweetie, you knew exactly what you were doing. So choke. They would literally steal these photos. And like Julie Horn gets it all the time. And, and, and they clearly, they're so dumb that they'll put it up. We all know what Julie Horn lips look like. I could spot them out in the crowd. And it, they literally put their logo over it and still had her watermark on her lips. I'm like, my God, people. But doing that, and I do it in a way that like it's hard for people to like steal your work. They still could but like it at least makes it harder. And it also looks cute. It like brands, I'm all about branding. So this is um, something that I created in PowerPoint. Like I actually do really well with PowerPoint. And then I send it to my digital girl and she recreates it and makes it a transparent background. So I created that in um, PowerPoint. I've created watermarks for people, gosh, several times. I did Sarah Berg's back in the day and all that stuff. But a watermark makes your photos, takes it to the next level. You don't have to do a, a watermark like that. You can simply put like a little text over, like the, on the line of the lip. I know Julie does that. Uh, you can create those in Canva. There's an app called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. And uh, you, it's free for the most part. And that's what I create all my uh, stuff in. Before and after photos, I'll either use a static record or I'll use a layout from Instagram. It's great. Um, and then I, to, it, you know, and then put like just a little text, you just need Canva, but to put an actual watermark, I actually use this app here and it's called watermark. I just, I had a bunch of them pulled up too. <laughs> yeah. Watermark photo mm -hmm. and there's watermark video that you can do. And it's as simple as like, I'll pull it up. I hit single image. I hit library. Make sure there's no inappropriate photos on my phone. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's one. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, there's beautiful Dr. K for a surprise we've got coming up. So it loads your photo. And then there's my little, for my little watermark. I can move it. I can make it transparent. I can um, 
make it like more faint. I can move it and then I just export the photo. I hit check mark, check, and it exports right out too. And it doesn't really affect the quality of your photo, which is why I like that one a lot. And it's easy to do. So Josh had a question about cropping. So I'm like an anti-cropper because I feel like it's hard to match and you get weird distortions. Uh -huh. But how do you work with, um, the question was about the lips specifically, how do you get just on the lips? What's your trick for that? So what I do is if I'm here, let me show you on the camera. So if I'm doing a picture of the lips, okay, cool. So he, here I am, okay? So I'm not gonna be, okay, okay, you can see my lips, but they're not gonna be as detailed, all right? And then the next picture I take is here because then I'm gonna have to, that weirdness. So like, I like to take full face, but then I also, when I get up to, I like to have a thing and there's this brilliant thing. Uh, I have to set it up again. I've taken it off just because of practice, but you can put that grid that's on the static record. You can put that grid on your phone. It's under your photography, your camera settings and settings. But I've just gotten to the point to where I basically get here and I boom. And I have in that inside that grid, there's like two lines that I keep the lips through. So boom, I take the photo. And then at the after photo, I know that when I get back in there and then I put the two, uh, the lips in between those two lines again, it's gonna be the same as the other one or almost close. Now, sometimes I'll still, when I go into layout and I'm doing the before and after photo, like I may have to zoom in just a titch, but it's like minuscule just to twist the angle a little bit, but that's human flaw, like I'm not a computer. And that's okay, but it's one thing when you take a picture from far away from here, and then one when you take one way up here and you have to zoom in one, one's gonna be fuzzy and this one's gonna be crystal clear and it's not consistent. Consistency is key and it takes practice. And to that same point, I'll go back one slide. So if you do use AR, or I have these pictures put together here, if you use our stitching tool, if you zoom, it zooms them together. So if I zoom on Jazz's face, um, as I'm zooming the picture, both are zooming at the exact same ratio in real time. So you can blow it up and screenshot it if you wanted to have something just on your own record for that. So yeah. there are some, some tools too, you can zoom things in the same pixel ratio, the same you know custom ratio, but to your point, if you're doing two totally different angles to try to crop one to fit the other is like disaster land. Don't do it. Yeah. Just and take the pictures. This isn't from like, you'll get pictures on your far left from like a photography station. Mm -hmm. The angle photos, that's just practice. Like from November till now, like I got better at it because thank you consultant clinic, you know, and that's just practice and, and nailing that angle and voila. And we had a question too, to go back as we're still thinking about this, about the credit card disputes and about using charts. So I can answer that for you on a legal perspective. Mm -hmm. Once a patient disputes a charge that you are allowed to defend yourself. So HIPAA no longer matters. Um, you're able to send in a chart. So there's an export chart button in our system. You can export the chart because the patient's now declaring that they've, they've received treatment from you or that they're contesting it. And so you're able to defend yourself. So the HIPAA veil is lifted um, because you get the right to defend yourself. So. Don't try it, hunty. I'm going to come for you. Mm -mm. And if I've got pictures, I'm going to win. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> so, anywho. And also, do you have all your clients sign a photo release, or do you pick and choose? Huge. So, here's the thing. This is a cute way to do this. Um, so, all love. Oh, and there's Whisperwood. There's my business. So, that's another. That's Victoria. So, still, even though different, you know, like, outdoor lighting's in there, too, they still are very consistent. Um and uh, so with, with your before and after photos, if you do it at the beginning, it's the paper, let's say they haven't met you, but they come in and they see that, they're probably a little nervous, they're probably gonna check no to before and after photos. You gotta get a release for them to use it. Um, and if you don't, then you can get in trouble, that's a HIPAA violation. So it, what we do is, we don't do it until the treatment room. So what happens is we get them in, we, we get to know them first, they're nervous. And then they, it's half the time they already know me. So, and some people beg, they're like, can I please go on your feed? I'm like, okay, sure. But they, um, they'll come in and we'll do it. And then it's all about how you react. And what you see here is what you get in real life. Like I will go on and I'll do a, a good set of lips. And then as I'm creating the before and after right now, I'm like, oh, girl, like the flaming homosexual that I am. Uh, call me unprofessional, whatever, I don't care. You can tune in or tune out to my radio station. The choice is yours. Um, but I literally will be, I'll, I'll be like, girl, look at this. And I show them that and they freak out. And they're like, oh my God, that's so good. And in the moment, I'm just like, girl. It, but what I've done is I've not shown the full face. I've, I've zoomed in so you don't know who they are. And I'm just like, girl, since this is, I have to share these. I'm like, do you mind if I share these? That people are gonna love this. 
and because they don't see their full face and they know that re not recognizable and they love their result, the answer is always yes. Yep. And then I'm like, okay, cool. Here is a little form. You get them excited about it. And then, um, and we've only had a handful since doing it that way because we get excited, they get excited. They want to show it off uh, that say no. And then we, we honor that, but we always get release um, to, to be able to do those. And I'll put a few up here. I love this branded template. I think it's hard to steal off of a template because the way you have them seated together, it's, you can't really like steal them off. But I love this idea that it's like a visual cue for the patient scrolling of, oh, it's a before and after. So I love what you've done there. Thank you. And it's different. It's not the, um, it's not your standard, like the ones that I, that I just showed you. So like, you know, I do a mine, I'm probably going to take before and after photos off of my Botox Josh page because nobody cares. They want the funny stuff, but that's the business. So it looks branded. And so play around with it. And then I put on um, Jubilee Aesthetics. So this, this patient here in the middle, I think that's like one of their highest likes ever because it was such a crazy good before and after. And yeah. even knowing that it's a real life treatment, hundred percent, the right, you know, the real life thing, mm -hmm. the haters came out in full force. Like this can't be real. She said something, she had eye lift surgery, like crazy stuff. Um, but the picture is beautiful and it's again, full face and very consistent. We're in yep. the same scrub top. <laughs> so, you know, it gets, it, when they're really good, you get great engagement. So that's right. always a plus. And then I put Lori's up here. She's got her little logo in here. Yeah. I think it's great. And her entire card, her entire Instagram post is just a before and after, which I think also looks really nice. And it's stacked this way instead of this way. So, yep. You got all kinds of choices on here. Oh, hey. But yeah, and sometimes patients don't know before and after, by the way. It shocks me. But if your pictures aren't amazing, they may not know which one's the before and the after. Yeah. Or your social media person may not know. So we've had a few situations where people got them mixed up and they had the after as a before. So if someone's not in our industry doing your Instagram, make sure that they know what to look for in the before and after. And may not be thinking about it. In English, we read left to right. So don't put your after photo first and your one, because sometimes that gets like, I'm like, like, it's just weird. Do, do them in order. You know what I mean? Before and then after. Like, that's just, because some people be like, uh, they look worse in the after photo. You'll get hate comments on that. And it's because you've reversed them. People love to put in the hate comments. They do, honey. Get a life. Oh, honey, quarantine. Oh, let's let's drink a big chug of it. We're gonna go over just FYI, those of you on the line. So if you don't want to go over, that's okay. If you do, we're gonna talk about a little bit of COVID real quick. So oh yeah, we're gonna have some. Go fun. for it, baby. When does Tennessee open up? When do you get to start injecting again? So as of right now, it is. It ends April thirtieth, and we get to go back May first um and all that stuff so i'm i'm excited about it tennessee uh, you know we got to top of the game uh, ahead of the curve a little bit and it's not as bad as most states so and and let's be honest it's good like take about 18 months for this to really go away we can't stay close for 18 months it's going to kill the economy here we go so we have to t i have a realist approach and i will just say this you may not agree with me on some of the things that come out of my mouth and that's totally fine um that's what makes the world a beautiful place place we all have a difference of opinion and I've learned, and my opinion on this thing has changed uh, drastically some too. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not going away anytime soon. And we have, this is our new normal for a second. And we have to, those that like adjust to the new normal will survive. And those who don't, they, the businesses may not do so well. So like, I know that we're not going to stay closed 800 years, but I also know that we have to do things differently, especially from an aesthetic standpoint. So we're excited to, to open back up. And uh, if, if it doesn't get pushed back further, funny because Hustler of Hollywood in Nashville is open and they're allowing people in their stores right now. But yet, so dildos are essential, but yet Botox for migraines is not like, come on, people, it's driving me crazy. Nashville mayor, I'm calling you out right now. Fix it before I drive in there, buy one and go hit you with it. It's driving me bonkers. But it is is something that if they don't extend again, then we have we we've, we've rescheduled our people. We're back open May first. But here's some questions that we need to ask ourselves: What does our protocols look like? Our protocols cannot be like they were. We if we expect that we're just like open up, okay, and go back to normal and have like all these people in our our, our waiting room and like all these things, like you're 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 crazy. Like we've got to think differently. Like for example, we have protocols in place, like our check-in thing, thanks to aesthetic record and some things and virtual consults that we are getting them checked in new people. They always require a consult because we want to, when we open back up, limit the amount of time that people have in here. I've got a team I have to protect. I've got a pregnant nurse injector that I have to protect. I want to protect myself. I also want to protect the population. So we're think like we're doing things such as like, 
uh, all new people, virtual consult. They don't do a consult in here. We can talk beforehand and get your treatment plan done. Sweet. All your paperwork is done out, out digitally. So when you come in, you literally come straight back to the treatment room. We do your treatment and then you are boom, check out. This the aesthetic record stores the credit cards. We don't have to touch credit cards and boom, you're done. Um, and you wait until the car. You wait in your car until the time of your procedure. We have it to where we can literally text you hey, it's time for your treatment, come in. That way we don't have five to 10 people gathering in a waiting room, putting people at risk. Um, for us, we're, I'm still a small practice, so we've got two, nurse, uh, two nurses and an esthetician, so the max that we would have in a waiting room is three, but we're not even putting people at risk with that. So what does your check-in process look like? How are you gonna handle all the paperwork? Do you want people you know, touching iPads and pens and all that stuff? Do you have a way that you can do it digitally to decrease your risk of spreading anything? And then you also have to look at like the procedures that you're doing. You know, in aesthetics, we do lip procedures. Should we be doing lip filler when we go back in this new normal for a second? Like, or do we phase it out until the curve keeps on going down? Like, could we, like, do, do, are all uh, aesthetic clinics got N95 masks and can protect yourself? Do you really want to be doing lip filler in somebody's face? Um, where you're going to have to be in there for 45 minutes and half the time we do injections right here in this midline and it can cause them to sneeze. They can't wear a mask. You're not going to put a dirty mask over their face after you've poked them in the face, you know, with needles and they can't put this dirty mask over. So like they're going to sneeze everywhere. You know, it's little things like that that's really caused me as a, 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 a provider to, to really think differently. And in filler, there's a whole other case too. We should ask this question like, I mean, we plan on doing everything, but then I've asked myself these questions. I'm like, I don't know what the answer is. We need to start the conversation of filler. You know, people, if they're healthy, fantastic. They come in, we do filler, they leave, everything's fine. They get COVID, they've got a hyperactive immune system, and that immune, and then they, while they're healing up from there, and they, heaven forbid they get the, uh, the COVID-19, and they, um, a, a weekend to get in their filler, their immune system, it could attack the filler, you know, and, and cause some issues there. So it's like things that like, like, I see people online, oh, we're up and up, boom, boom, bam, or I can't wait. Or I see people still going to people's houses and treating this. You are a healthcare practitioner. These are medical procedures. Botox and all these things are not a freaking serum from Sephora. Stop treating them as such. Treat them as the prescription medications that they are. And the board is going to look at these uh, procedures the same as they do a heart surgery. It may not be as severe, but when you go in front of a board because you got in trouble for going to somebody's home, would you do? Would surgeons go to people's homes and do heart surgery? I think not. Then you shouldn't be going to people's homes and injecting people with these things. Their medical procedures start treating them as such. And so it's it drives me crazy that these people I'm seeing, they're like, oh, open back. Yes, get excited about open back up. But ask yourself the tough questions. Don't do things. We paid a lot of money for our license. I paid a lot of money. Honey, I'm still paying Sally May for my license. And for me, lip filler to make a few hundred bucks and my medical director to make, but it's not worth it if it's going to put people at risk. Like I think neuromodulators is the, the easiest thing that we can do. Pick up skincare, neuromodulators and B12 shots or an, you know, even IVs are in there for your clinic for a while is the easiest thing that we could do. They're in and out fast versus filler we have to be in through there. So like if just think of like protecting yourself, like ethically we signed, like we, we took an oath to do no harm. And some sadly in this industry, people put money above ethics and and I hate seeing that. Like, I get it, honey, we all broke. We gonna go on shopping sprees. Like, I can't wait for retail therapy, but it's gonna be at the dollar store with my $20 that I have left to my name to spend, honey. But I'm gonna spend it up, honey. I am, it's gonna feel good. But we all, the whole world's in the same in, in situation. But you gotta do what is ethical and, and stop doing things just to make a dollar because your license is worth more than that. And a patient's life, I would hate to know that I put somebody at risk, you know what I mean? So it's, I know I went on a rant through there, but that's what spilling the tea is about. But it's, it's, you have to ask yourself these difficult things. What does the new normal look like? What does your check-in look like? What does, what's the procedures? What should we be doing? Like, and I, I don't know all the answers. Like it's something that I've started a question in the community to be like, hey, what are you guys doing? Like, are you guys doing filler? Like, should we be doing filler? Um, but to think we're going back to a new normal and just going to open up and things are going to be like all hunky dory again, you've got enough thing like you need some reality because that's not how it's going to be for a hot minute. And if you're not prepared, if you don't have a, 
a plan, that, you know, like those that fail to plan and plan to fail. So that's what we're kind of doing right now is we're trying to just do what's safe, but also from a business standpoint, what can generate income and what can we do safely to not put ourselves at risk, to not put them at risk, but have a successful business. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, had a question come in or a comment. So Dr. Weiner, Steve Weiner, who's in Hi. Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, his, I think his wife Sandy's on, um, he's developing some protocols, I think, and some, some things to help us as we come back thinking through the safety of injections and as we treat patients. So I look forward to seeing that. We'll share that on our Instagram and give you guys a connection to that. If um, they use our telehealth portal, by the way, thank you, um, Aesthetic Clinic. But I think you make a great point about doing telehealth visits. So we have that in our system as part of just like the basic. If you get our system at 12 bucks a month, you have telehealth. But I think about people who oh, are coming. Did uh -huh. you just hear that? If you get our basic system, which does a lot, at $12 a month, not 500, not 1,000, $12 per user per month. Just want to, just, just want to throw that out there. That's massive, Thank people. You. Massive. Well, Thank you for that. Lord, child, people paying $500 a month for a system that aesthetic record does. Lord, child, you're getting robbed. You got to <sighs> save that Dollar Tree money up. <laughs> but the point of that is you can send your consents out now into the patient portal. So it's a HIPAA protected patient portal where they can sign their consents for you. So there's no need for them to actually physically touch anything. Uh, and I think too, as we think about the time we're spending right now at home, this is a great time to get all the freebies out of the way, all the free consults, get them done. So yeah. that when you open the door on Monday, May 5th, whatever the day is, I don't know, then you can see paying patients from the minute you open the doors, whether it's for Botox, it's for you know, any of these things that you've mentioned. I think getting that out of the way now is mm -hmm. a, it's a great way to accelerate not having the freebies clogging up your schedule. So yeah. think about telehealth people. And then for the check-in procedure, if your EMR is not doing it, or you just want to know kind of what we're doing in our world, we're going to have a whole protocol for check-ins around like a patient questionnaire, do you have a fever, have you been out of the country, the things that we all need to know from the CDC, but also this idea that no more iPad touching. So we let patients sign our iPad in a kiosk mode that's like a HIPAA kiosk thing, but now we can do it all again via like an electronic send so that you don't have to physically have them touching the same thing that you're touching and spreading all that mess around. So you'll see some things coming out for us with that that'll hopefully decrease the, the shared exposure. Nice. But, um, you got to, I mean, in the last four weeks, we've changed our entire business with telehealth, with these virtual consents, with, you know, you it's affecting so all of fast. us. So fast. Now, I've never seen a, a company like develop, like hats off to you guys for doing that. I mean, it's just like Dr. Hart. Oh my gosh. I just like, I can't even like you guys developed like a tele, you were like, oh, we need a telehealth system. Okay. Let's do that. in what, like 24 hours or you did something so crazy. Like you did oh, it. My hair looks like this. Yeah. <laughs> And we have a webinar tomorrow, Dr. Zoe Rafat, who's in um, California. She's like my telehealth poster child. She adopted this thing like the first minute it came out. So she'll be on tomorrow talking about how her clinic uses it and what they're doing with it, with dictation, with all the notes, with charting. You can do prescriptions now and there, like all kinds of crazy stuff. So she'll be on tomorrow discussing that. But um, yeah, 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 I think there's a, it's a whole new world, whole new world. Whole new world. And you got to adapt or be left behind, you know, and, uh, and, and, and not be ignorant to it and not be so stuck in that you, you're, you're too good to ask questions or do things differently. Yeah, and yes, ask your peers. So for sure, Dr. Weiner's developing some things. I think even Dr. K is doing some, some things, thinking through some protocols. So mm -hmm. as those things become available to us, either through the societies or through obviously our esteemed colleagues who publish regularly, we will get those out to you. Either if you're on the AR newsletter, we'll get it to you that way or on our Instagram to give you some referrals to go and, and look. because. I think if we get one shot to get this right, and if we screw it up, they're going to shut us down again. Yeah. So we have to think, yeah. I mean, we have to t tread very lightly and do a good yeah. job, or they're going to say, nope, your Botox is not essential. Go yeah. home. It's so, it, that. Heidi, there's about to be a lot of husband or, uh, or people like, it's about to be essential after my husband finds out what I really look like here in a few more weeks. <laughs> they're like, no, it's essential. <laughs> When as we close down, I can't, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about your big webinar, Zoom oh, yeah. extravaganza coming up on Sunday. I'll, I'll be tuning in for sure. If yeah. you want to give us like where to sign up and any details on that. So the people who are on either YouTube live stream or here can go get signed up. Yeah. So uh, me and a bunch of the misfits, we got Botox Bunny, Botox Fairy, uh, Larry and uh, Hania. Some of the kind of like um, extenders in the industry were kind of like the misfits with the rebels and all this stuff. 
we decided to come together and we formed the Aesthetic Squad. And we want to bring you, it's a six hour intensive, but now it's got a little bit longer because we just have special guest Dr. K that's going to be coming on. You all love and know her. She's going to be doing all about anatomy. So we're going to have anatomy on there as well. But we're doing things differently. We want to break the mold a little bit. Like it's not your standard conference thing that you're thinking about. Like when you leave a conference and you're just like, okay, that was great, but I still have these questions. Like, or that was great on-label stuff, but what's all the off-label stuff? Or when you do have like, find out some off-label stuff and you're just like, but how much do I use? Where do I put it? Like I, it's so whatever, we're going to dive down deep into all the crazy things that you want to know, but you do, there's not a place to learn them and learn the, exactly what you need to do. So we've got a Botox bunny, Erica Berry, that's going to be talking myomodulation. She's going to be talking about her eight point facelift. She's going to tell you how much, where to place all this stuff to get that natural contour with filler and talk about and debunk the myths of myomodulation. Is it fact or fiction? Then uh, you've got Botox Fairy that's going to talk all things. She's like known as the booty queen. So she's going to be talking all things hyperdilute radius. Sculpture is great, but hyperdilute radius, we're going to be doing neck, decollete, knees, arms, butts, you name it. Like hyperdilute is really a phenomenal way. If you're afraid to place radius in the face, like on bone, we're going to address that, but like learn how to do dilute hyperdilute radius. And she was one of the pioneers for it. You've got Hania that's going to go over advanced toxic paralytics. So we're going to talk about the, all the place where you put neuromodulators on the face uh, in the strange areas. Like we're going to be going all down here, micro uh, droplet technique. We're going to be doing all the weird muscles like that. You're like, what? Hyperhidrosis. We're going to be, uh, there's going to be injection technique for all kinds of stuff, but then exactly what reconstitution, exactly how much goes where, the, an the questions that you really do need answered. And then uh, Jess, uh, Injector Jess is going to be talking, it's threaded AF, she's going to be talking all threads, teaching you how to get the, the brow lifts and going over the safety, efficacy and all that thing with threads and you actually learn how to do them. And then I'm going to be talking all things skin and because of half the injectors and people, they don't know how to talk about skincare and uh, they're so focused on injectables, but like skincare without or injectables without skincare is like buying an iPhone without Apple Care. So I'm going to show you guys how to incorporate it in your consultation, how to sell skincare, how to partner with injectables, what ingredients do you need to be using, some examples of that. And, um, and going over, if you don't want to learn it, then how to utilize your esthetician to really up your ante with skincare. And then we've got Daddy Larry Blevins, phenomenal PA, uh, very successful. He's going to be talking a little bit of the stuff that we talked about. What's life after, you know, flash forward? What's life after COVID? What's that look like in one month, six months, 24 months? And the questions you need to ask yourself, the uh, topics, what do your protocols look like? All the things he's very successful business-wise. And so he's going to share his models uh, that has made him very successful. He's going to share you and help you to be able to open up and be successful and survive. So it's going to be real fun. And then Dr. K with anatomy, it's a uh, six hours. It's Sunday, April 26th from one to seven. It is three ninety nine. dollars A portion of that's going to go. We are going to donate for PPE relief and uh, going for a good cause. So it's going to be fun. It's going to, I think we're all going to try to dress up as like superheroes. So it's going to be real. It's going to be different. It's going to be fun. It's going to be hilarious. And the link is in your bio. I think it's in everyone's bio. So if you guys yep. want to figure out where to go, to, and it's, yeah. just go to at Botox Josh and, um, give me a follow. Hey girl. And then in my bio, you just click the link and it'll take you right to register. And if you got the AR newsletter this week, the same little card is on there with the register here. You can click that link and go to the, the zoom sign up as well. So we're at the end of our time, Josh. I wanted to go all day, but it can't go all day. Yeah. There's wine to be drank, honey. I got to go home and drink the wine. <laughs> gotta go. Well, if you want to talk to us about anything we mentioned today with AR, with our system, with photography, anything to do with telehealth, you can get us on DMs on Instagram, on Facebook. I check them myself, so you'll get yours truly. You can send us an email, go to our website, which will be new in the next day or two. So stay tuned for a beautiful new glow up, a COVID glow up of our website. And then Josh's Instagram handle, you can certainly find him there at all hours of the day. And yeah. then check out his practice. They have a beautiful website with Thank some you. just great features and, and beautiful things on the site that I think are really good best practices. So go check him out there. He'll be at Aesthetic Next in September. So get yourself a ticket. He'll be on webinars probably for the rest of his life at this point. So you'll see him all around. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Anytime AR calls, I'm like, I love you guys. You guys are fantastic. And I'm, I'm game for anything. I'm happy to be part of the AR family and uh, just appreciate you all having me on. Well, it's been a blast and I have loved every minute of it. We're going to let you go get some wine down Wednesday in your system. Thank you guys for joining in on YouTube and on our webinar, and we will see you next time.
Bye, Josh. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome.